Hello and welcome back to the 13th Annual Virtual Youth Summit presented by the Florida Youth Council and the Family Cafe. My name is Nikki Germain. I am the Youth Advisor here at the Family Cafe. I am over the Florida Youth Council and here with me today is Alex Gonzalez. Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Alex and today, or at least in this hour session, we're going to be introducing you to Alicia Bolton and Carly Fahey from IEL on presenting on the zigzags of life. Thank you so much, Alex and Nikki. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, as Alex just mentioned, I'm Carly Fahey, Program Director of Youth and Civic Engagement Initiative and DC Advocacy Partners. I'm with the Institute for Educational Leadership here in DC, but my roots lie in Florida, and I'm a longtime fan of the Florida Youth Summit. And I'm here along with my colleague, Alicia. Hi, everybody. I'm so happy to be here. Um, I work alongside with Carly at the Institute for Educational Leadership, where I'm a project director. Uh, while I'm not originally from Florida, I do have roots in Tallahassee. I went to Florida A&M University, so I'm so ha happy to, at least in spirit, be back with you in Florida. Excellent. So as we have um, our Toy Story 4 theme for the Youth Summit this year, we are excited to kind of dive into what we like to call the zigzags of life, basically our own toy story of transition. Next slide. Toy Story, um, as we know, or as we'll see later today, if we watch the film, is a tale about change, transition, growth, which we can all relate to. You know, as we get more into um, each Toy Story installment, each toy grows older and wiser, and they're seeing more moments of uncertainty and change of pace. As we do every day um, as young people and emerging leaders with the dis disabilities, um, during this particular time of our lives, that you know, age of 13 to 30, um, we really are in a time of, of huge change with our services, our living arrangements, job preparation, um, deciding what's next. And there's a technical term for that. And that's what we call transition. And um, I'm gonna turn the time over to my colleague Alicia as she shows us a short video, which is the trailer to Toy Story 4 to refresh some of our memories or introduce us to the film. Looks like we're having some audio difficulties. Everyone, Bonnie made a friend in class. Oh, she's already making friends. No, no, she literally made a new friend. I want you to meet Forky. Uh, hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Ah. He's a spool. Yes, yeah, I know. Forky is the most important toy to Bonnie right now. We all have to make sure nothing happens to him. Woody, we have a situation. I am not a toy. I was made for soup, salad, maybe chili, and then the trash. Buzz, we got to get Forky. The permit. Why am I alive? You're Bonnie's toy. You are going to help create happy memories that will last for the rest of her life. Huh? What? Oh, yeah. Oh. Come on. Bo? Bo? Hi there. My name is Gabby Gabby. We can't stay. <laughs> yes, you can. Boy. What are you behind you? Bo, what are you doing here? No time to explain. Come with me. We need to get back to our kid. Aw, oh, Sheriff Woody, always coming to the rescue. Bonnie needs four kids. Woody, who needs a kid's room when you can have all of them? Yes. Wow. Woody, aren't we going to Bonnie? We have to find them. What do we do, Buzz? What, what, what do you do? Jump out of a moving vehicle. Let's go. Yeah. You got to go. You got to go. If you should ever leave me. You know, you've handled this lost toy life better than I could. Open your eyes, Woody. There's plenty of kids out there. Sometimes change can be good. You can't teach this old toy new tricks. You'd be surprised. Bonnie? We're going home for you. Don't let Woody leave. Kids 
lose their choice every day. I was made to help a child. I don't remember it being this hard. Wait, somebody's whispering in your ear. Everything's gonna be okay. <laughs> Alicia. Um, I really love that trailer because I feel like as we dive into some of the deeper themes of transition, a lot of them were previewed right there in the trailer, even if you haven't had access to the film yet or you haven't seen it and you're waiting to watch it tonight. Um, I think that's a good refresher to a lot of the, a lot of the things that we're going to dive into today. So what is transition? Transition can be defined by using several different areas. Here at IEL, we like to split them into six. Basically, transition is, you know, that area of change in your life, um, usually in adolescence or emerging adulthood, when you're going from, you know, one school system to the next, which is called school-based transition, or you could have your your um, area of transition concern be more career or work learning based, which is exploring different careers or maybe um, remembering to advocate um, for your ADA accommodations on the job. There's transition you'll need to do within all of this around your own youth development and your leadership styles, which is learning how to communicate um, to get the services that you might need going from you know, home to your own apartment or um, your critical thinking development. And again, learning your ADA rights as a young person when you're um, kind of exiting one setting and going into a new setting. Uh, and also, you know, within that, that leadership and development, it's believing in your capabilities or what we like to call self-determination. Also within transition, there's a, a fourth area called connecting activities, which is really um, keeping things like self-care, decision-making and self-advocacy, having the knowledge to find safe and acceptable. And understanding that, you know, as we um, learn our strengths and weaknesses in transition, we, we know that we deserve um, equal opportunities just like everyone else. And that can also include um, civic engagement and family engagement, which is one of my favorite areas. And I feel like the Family Cafe highlights really well is that part of transition of making sure that your family or your support system is there to help you participate in your transition. Um, instead of your parent or your guardian or your counselor, being your advocate, they kind of turn into your coach to teach you some of what you might need to know. Um, also in some of that family engagement transition um, piece is, is developing the things you might need um, to, to help them keep in mind for you to have a more peaceful transition and learning how to communicate that with your family. So there are many pieces of transition um, that young people have to keep in mind and I feel like as a lot of the toys went through um, Toy Story 4, they were touching on some of these pieces, maybe without even realizing it. Youth with disabilities often need a more um, structured or formalized transition period, but these are things that all youth need, that all young adults go through, um, even you know, pushing 30 and beyond. Uh, many young people face a lot of these challenges, but ultimately what we need is successful planning to get through from that career, um, from the school transition, post-secondary education and independent living, and even some of those family pieces that support system working together is, is what really is um, a key to success. Next slide. The most immediate or striking example for us um, in the film of transition or change is when little Bo Peep goes away uh, or when Bonnie goes to kindergarten and leaves her toys behind. You know, I think um, when, when Bo Peep has to leave in the film, a lot of the other toys um, feel kind of complacent. They don't, they, they wonder, you know, I, I see this big change. What does this mean for my role in my friendships? Um, what does this mean for, for my job as a toy? Um, you know, how am I going to operate without a member of our team? And that's just a huge example of transition. 
And when Bonnie goes to kindergarten and leaves her felt a lot of, of loneliness or sadness as well. And I don't feel too much of the movie for folks, so we'll move to the next slide. Transition is different for each of us. So what I like about this particular slide, if we can look at the photo, we'll see on the left, we have Woody and Buzz from 1995. And then on the right, we have them um, in the 2019 Toy Story 4 film. They're really looking um, older, wiser. They've evolved a little bit. Their color is a little bit sharper. And we go through that too. Just like many of the toys, we all go through our challenges related to some of those individual needs, some, dis uh, some of our disabilities, our neurodiversity, differences in our skill sets that need to be enhanced as we move on to that next phase of life. Um, some social growth and social dilemmas that can be really challenging emotionally. And um, some of those barriers prevent us from being able to get to infinity and beyond. Next slide. All right. Um, here you'll see Andy on the left and then adult Andy on the right. And he's, you know, through, through these toys and these supports, he's able to make that transition in his life as well. Um, learning how to sort of use the term transition during this part of your life to describe some of these changes will help you as a young person with a disability navigate and access new supports and changes or services. Um, you know, really owning that term as, as we kind of describe all of those areas like school transition, job transition, family transition. Um, using that term when you talk to your support system is really important because it helps you access services more quickly, just gets you more help and more support. In Florida, we have something called transition age, which is a technical term that's anywhere between um, the ages of 14 and 22 years old, where this could also be different depending on your needs or your disability, but you know, as um, participants in the U Summit, most of you are going to be within this transition age. And um, in order to get help in these different areas, you really need to own that word transition, just like we love to own the word disability as a disability community to have access to more help, more accommodations and more services. Um, this means that when you use the term transition, you can often get more help from your school through transition programs your VR counselor through their robust offering of um, transition programming, or even like the um, disability specific or non-disability specific programming you attend, or your service or support coordinator, all of those folks should know what transition help, transition time, the word transition means in your disability context. And that's gonna make it easier if you just don't have all of the words to describe what this change is feeling like. Next slide. All right, um, a great first step for finding what different supports you might need is to talk to your support system, talk to your parent, talk to your guardian, talk to your service or support coordinator. Um, sometimes this first step is easily identified or taken through the school system. Usually the school system um, in Florida likes to work with the Florida Vocational Rehabilitation or VR system starting at you know the age of 14 to offer offer you guys through your IEP meetings some more um, help and support to be there for you in case you need some services um, at the age of you know 14 or 16 or um, beyond beyond that into um, different pieces of transition so sometimes the systems will work together um, and it's, it's important that you're able to ask for that and to speak up for um, inquiring, asking about more transition, transition supports available to you. Um, one of our favorite resources is, of course, the Florida Vocational Rehabilitation's transition site, which is listed in that first bullet. And then we have um, a personal favorite of mine, the Institute for Educational Leadership's Guideposts for Success. That kind of dives really deep into um, not just what youth with disabilities need in transition, but what all youth um, need for a successful transition during that period of, of life. And we have um, also what's called the Guidepost 2.0, where we go in and offer some suggestions for each of those areas of transition where I listed um, so that you guys can apply it to your lives at home and you can show 
um, your support system or your friends or family to um, help you get a better idea of what you need for your individual planning going forward during this time of your life. Also, um, I love some of the third and fourth resources from NCWD Youth. That's a part of our workplace here in DC. These were um, transition specific resources um, written for youth with disabilities by youth with disabilities. And another rock star is that last bullet, our tip sheets. My personal favorite, the gem would be um, the tip sheet on youth and job transition. Building a new support system for transition. Um, so here we have Bonnie on the slide. She's carrying her backpack. Personally, I love her first day of school aesthetic, but as we remember from the trailer we just saw, um, things were a little bit scary when Bonnie was first going to school. Um, and, and, and Bonnie um, was able to kind of voice her uneasiness or uncertainty um, because she had to be in an environment with all new people and, and didn't have a lot of friends. And I think most of us can really um, a disability or, you know, neurodiversity that might mean that we show up a little bit differently depending on how our environment looks. Um, we're obviously much older or advanced than Bonnie. We're not in kindergarten. But we can all really adults or even teens on what Bonnie went through and how it's affecting some of her home as she's leaving the nest. Next slide. So in order for Bonnie to kind of deal with this new environment she's in, um, like many of us, Bonnie created something uh, that she didn't already have. And for Bonnie, that was creating Forky. She created Forky, quote, out of trash. Um, even though none of us are trash, youth with disabilities often need to create new or recombine existing resources in a world or environment that's just not built for us. Sometimes we have to be creative and imaginative and um, try to figure out a, a, a tool or a system that might work for us that's not already there. Um, Forky wasn't made out of the same usual materials as other toys or characters, but Bonnie loved him just the way, as the way he was because she created Forky for, um, for her support system. So he was what he needed, even though he just felt like trash. Um, Bonnie created what she needed to be independent and comfortable, and that made Forky's purpose really big. And I think we can all relate to Bonnie in this instance, needing something in a new place or, a, you know, at a new phase of life and not necessarily knowing how to find it. So we have to be a little bit creative with ourselves and our support systems. Um, or that could be, you know, how you feel um, your your personal device is like I have a walker, for instance, I love it so much it goes everywhere with me. Um, and that what's that's what makes me feel comfortable and supported as I move throughout any environment so I can be less afraid more prepared. And um, I think Forky was a little bit of an aid or a guide to Bonnie. And sometimes, you know, um, as young people, we in our new environment or a PCA, a personal care attendant. Um, and that might be more of our Forky and that's okay too. They have a huge purpose. Next slide. All right, so here we see um, Forky, he's smiling, he's gaining some confidence here. Like Forky, youth with disabilities, we may be seen as different, but um, often young people with disabilities have gifts and a purpose of obviously just like everyone else. Forky at first wanted to withdraw from other toys because he felt kind of out of place as we all do sometimes. Many of us encounter this during our own transition, especially as things are changing and we're with new people, but the feeling is mostly temporary. Um, during this time, um, you know, just like most of us after a change, Forky found his purpose and he took efforts to bond with other toys um, who eventually loved him just as he was, just like Bonnie did. Just took some time and some confidence. Next slide. All right, not every plan will work out and often plans will change and that's okay. It's important for us as we start our transition plans that we give ourselves some space and some patience. Things will work out smoother if we have more supports built into our transition plan. 
Um, and if your plan doesn't necessarily work out and you have to start from scratch or start at square one, that's okay too. You're not trash. Transition plans often change a million times. Um, you know, that's why I think we have folks we can go to to help us make these adjustments. Sometimes if, you know, you go through um, a path like going to a new school or a new program um, and things aren't working out and you're not feeling safe and you've tried to find your, build your forky, find your accommodations and it's not working, having friends as a sounding board to help you figure out what's next or relying on um, guardians, parents, folks you trust is really important because um, emotionally it can be a lot on us. Here we see Gabby on this slide. Um, she, she is with a new young lady and, and she's trying to bond with her as her toy, but we see through the, the young lady's expression on the bottom left that maybe she's not, just not feeling it. She's not too happy with Gabby and she um, kind of hurts Gabby's feelings as we'll see in the film. But um, luckily, you know, Gabby is able to, to pick herself up later in the film and um, move, move through a more appropriate transition that, that she, you know, found a new path. Next slide. All right. Through. Um, need a transition tune-up. Gabby at one point thought she was going to get a new voice box and that was going to solve all of her problems as well. Um, and it didn't. It can be difficult, you know, to find what you need and also literally to find your voice in this process. Um, I think, you know, if we need a transition tune up, especially, and we have a lot of folks on our side or in our quote unquote village, um, there are a lot of voices that are trying to uh, let us know, try to tell us what's best. And um, it's really important that you find a balance between um, you know, feeling supported, but also being able to speak about your own preferences, your own feelings during this time, and um, trying to make some of your own choices about what can be next, especially during your transition tune-up. Um, sometimes you can get a transition tune-up by visiting an independent living center, or excuse me, a center for independent living, as we call them, or going again to your VR office and talking to your VR counselor um, and adjusting your plan. Next slide. Um, so, you know, again, to talk about Gabby, she was a courageous toy. She took one avenue or even two and they didn't work out. Gabby was disappointed as we all get, felt kind of out of place. I think as youth with disabilities, you often have to push through these times where you feel like Gabby in order to find the upside. You have to kind of go through those moments of growth and the moments of frustration or feeling out of place feel um, the sweet fruits of success to, to feel that upside. And it takes a while. Um, eventually, Gabby took another chance, and I won't uh, spoil it any further for you all, but uh, she, she found what fit for her and what felt great. Um, symbolically, your, again, your VR office, your counselor, your parent, your guardian, school system, they will all work with you um, if you are feeling like you're in need of this tune-up. Next slide. All right. So um, a successful transition refocus. I'm going to do a little bit of math here. Math is not my strength. But here's our transition takeaway. Transition tune-up plus a dash of courage equals success. As others see you grow and learn um, how, see you learning how to use your voice in your direction, you could often intentionally or unintentionally serve as a peer mentor for them or somebody that they look up to. Um, I know when I was younger, I had a lot of other friends um, who would attend things like the family cafe with me and they were going through really big life challenges and going to college. Um, and I think as a, a young person, I wasn't always sure that going away for college was going to work for me. But because I saw some of my friends with similar disabilities being able to do that and maybe having to switch midway through um, and having that courage, um, that allowed me to look at them as a friend, but also as a mentor. And I encourage all of you as you're 
talking to your friends with and without disabilities that you share um, or ask them about some of these transitions and kind of get some tips or some pointers um, just so you can know, you know, from people um, who've done it before, who are your age, uh, you know, what's possible or what's next. And if, if you're the first one in your friend group kind of going through that transition, it's so rewarding to be able to be a mentor to other people um, that are, you know, in your friend circle and be able to say to them, I went through all of these steps. Here's how I did it. Here are some resources that I used to um, go through my own story of transition. Here's when I needed a transition tune-up. And here are the, the resources, the people, the agencies, the appointments I needed. You know, here's what was there for me, and this is what worked for my transition plan. I think it's um it's often uh, mind-boggling a little bit because there's not um, there's not like a formal plan like you have with an IEP for everyone's transition because like I spoke to earlier there can be six or more different areas of a person's you know life transition um, and so it's not necessarily a, a one-size-fits-all document that you fill in with boxes it is um, what you create it to be and um, it touches so many parts of your life so I think just starting small and uh, relying on the people that you trust to help you um, to elevate you through some of the the unknowns is is going to be so helpful. Next slide. All right. Um, you know, trying and self discovery again are the real fruits of it. I uh, I love this slide. This is sort of similar to what we've already talked about, but you'll see, look at little Bo Peep from Toy Story 1. Like, look how timid and scared she looks. And now look how fierce she looks in, uh, on the right over here with her new look and some of her new friends. She's determined, she's been through it. And, um, you know, she, she's she got a whole new story and, and the, the strength just flows from her face. Um, you know, little Bo Peep, she went away. Um, she experienced so much growth and found a new beginning. She missed her friends, but she found them again, as well as those new faces. And I think the opportunity of finding a new social circle in transition is, is going to um, be such a pivotal, uh, exciting opportunity for all of us. Um, you know, it's not always easy to find new friends. And sometimes you have to pull up Worky and invent them or bring them in. Um, to kind of comfort you, but having that new social circle, I think, allowed Bo Peep to evolve into the strong, awesome uh, woman she is today. And um, she discovered a new purpose, and her absence inspired Woody to travel, to see new sights, and to meet some of those new toys that maybe he thought were his enemies at first. So there's a lot there. I mean, we see, we see Woody um, really looking at Bo Peep as maybe an informal mentor to help him say, okay, she did it. Now, maybe this is something I can try as well. And, uh, you know, we'll be able to see how that ends. Next slide. Um, you know, Bonnie was really independent. She needed Forky to help get her there. Um, I think, you know, this is the first time where a Toy Story character cries in the film, but she eventually finds some balance in her independence um, that she needed to get through some of the loneliness and some of the loss that she felt while in her kindergarten class. Um, again, so there's, you know, more of Bonnie's transition. Of course, there are those rewards along the way. Um, youth with disabilities, we have to learn how to access uh, what we need from our new environment and just try to navigate that appropriately. And uh, it, it's okay, again, to have that tune up. Next slide. I think these might be all of my slides. All right. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, so um, I am available as well as Alicia through our email addresses. Um, mine is my last name, first initial at IEL.org. Same with Alicia Bolton. 
Um, if you have any questions regarding navigating some transitions, um, youth development or youth leadership, um, feel free to, to contact us or to ask us questions in the comment box. And also, I want to say Duke Kaboom is one of my favorite characters in this film. Um, I just think he's so awesome. So I put a few Duke Kaboom photos in our slides and I'm pretty proud of it. Should we take questions? Sure. All right, so um, Vicki, you got a question so, for us? The first question, um, when moving out on your own, was it easy for you to transition? And if not, what was the hardest part? Ooh. Um, I will answer for Alicia. Um, just kidding. I'll, I'll provide my perspective on that. So um, I moved out when I was 18 or 19, um, going from Tallahassee, where I'm from. Shout out to everyone over in Tallahassee. Um, first to South Florida to try a very small liberal arts college. And I thought like everything was going to work out. Their brochure and my visit sort of cemented to me that like, even though um, I was the first person with a physical disability attending this, this um, smaller school, smaller college, I thought, you know, all of my supports were going to be there. And then um, when I moved out there, it was really difficult for me to stay because um, the school wasn't necessarily prepared for somebody with a physical disability as they hoped that they would be by the time I came in. And, um, you know, I had gotten really sick and my roommate got sick as well. And it was really difficult for us um, to navigate, like, what do we do with our healthcare? Like we're, we were very new um, at, that, at that point to living on our own. And, and so we had to go home to kind of be well and to get ourselves healthy again. Um, and I realized that that really small environment where sometimes the accommodations weren't always guaranteed off the bat made me so nervous that I decided I wanted to go to a really big school. I wanted to go to a state school. So I went, um, you know, uh, to an out of state school to environ to experience like a new environment and some new weather too, because I had, I was really sort of tired of the Florida heat. But um, I think that it was difficult for me in that environment to figure out some of the independent living um, help or, or resources that I needed. I think for me, like um, if I get tired at the end of the day, like picking up uh, a lot of stuff off the floor or like doing my laundry was not something physically with my cerebral palsy that was going to be um, reliable all the time. So I needed to find out like a schedule or, you know, talk to family and like figure out a more accessible way to do that. And I, I was able to um, with those supports. And I also had um, some vocational rehabilitation supports over the years, helping me um, with like some things that um, scholarships couldn't provide. And, and, and um, you know, I had a great relationship with my vocational rehabilitation counselor, just kind of checking in on me. And I felt comfortable enough to tell her like, this is working out and this is what I need you to help me change. And it helped me become more independent. So I was very grateful for those experiences of having some pitfalls, first um, moving out and you know being out in college to finding what worked better for me. And uh, maybe I'll share just a little bit of um, an example from my own life. Um, so I was born and raised in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And when I went away to college, to Florida A&M University, that was really my first time you know, kind of being on my own, being apart from my mom and my grandparents. And I'll never forget um, <laughs> standing on the porch, you know, in Philly, standing on the porch at my grandparents' house um, saying goodbye. And I just, it was just such a profound moment because I realized that, you know, within a 16 hour drive, I was going to be miles and miles away from my family and my friends. And, um, you know, Carly is absolutely correct, you know, getting whatever that new environment is for you, you know, making sure that you, you know, reach out to folks, ask for help, introduce yourselves, um, 
and really begin to build that new support system is really critical to success. And, um, you know, it, it, there's no substitute, right, for the loved ones in your, in your life who you're close to, but certainly, you know, there are some great people out there, great people around this world. And, and sometimes, you know, just making that first step to, you know, make a connection um, or in some cases create that support network, um, like we see with Forky. Uh, it really makes the difference. So, um, you know, just wanted to underscore that point. Absolutely. Got time for another question? Oh, All right, so um, my question is, is what kinds of transitions have you personally experienced? This goes for both of you. Probably want to start. Yeah, I'll start us off. So other than, you know, kind of the the stereotypical, like going to college with my walker and my um, cerebral palsy, I think um, I've gone through like different job transitions or I think when you have to request accommodations or work with like new colleagues in a workplace, that's considered a big transition. Um, I think, you know, in DC and in many other places, like things move really quickly. Um, and so uh, it always takes time to adjust and to see what you need in your environment or what works for you. Um, and sometimes if you if you don't need ADA accommodations like I, I do, like sometimes I need a note taker um, in meetings and things. And um, sometimes I need my physical environment to be set up a certain way and things like that. Um, but I feel like even if you don't have a disability, a transition like that, is always going to be present. And so I think transition planning in general prepared me for um, like older adulthood in, in terms of like always trying to be adaptable during times of change and um, trying to, to communicate as much as possible if you know I was feeling like stressed or overcooked in like a work environment with a work transition. Um, I feel like at our workplace, like things just change all the time and that's that's just the way life is. And so it's about um, the approach you have to to going through those changes and making adjustments and communicating with with colleagues that was really important to me. Yeah, and for me, you know, similarly, my my biggest transitions have been around going from high school into college, college into work work into family life. And um, at every every point, there's always this uh, moment of uncertainty, right? Uncertainty around what is the new thing going to be like? Um, do I have what it takes to do the new thing? Will I be able to find these new supports? Or what if, what if something happens and it just doesn't work or there's a failure? And you know, if I could use a basketball example, even though I do not play basketball, I'm the person you don't want on your team. <laughs> um, one of the one of the um, best examples, I, one of the best, I guess, phrases um, I've ever heard is that, you know, you, there's always a chance when you do something new that you'll make a mistake, right? So if you're playing a game of basketball or, or any other sport or activity, you know, you might, you might not make that shot. Right. Or you might not make a lot of the shots, but for sure, you'll miss 100 percent of the shots that you never take. Right. And for me, you know, that that really is something that I've kind of kept in the back of my head because we all have unique gifts, unique contributions. And if we don't take a moment to step out of our comfort zone to try that new city or that new school or approach that new friend, we'll never know uh, what could have been. And so um, at every transition point, you know, just having that self-talk with myself to say, Leash, just try. <laughs> and even if it doesn't work, it's okay because you will have learned something and you will be better for that. Okay. How has transition impact your life? I think transition offer, offers growth and opportunities. Um, just as Alicia was saying, you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. So if, um, if you're too afraid or you wanna kind of stay in your lane and not transition to the next phase or something that really is important to you or exciting to you, um, 
you you're not able to to grow more as a human and sometimes again it takes some heartache and some frustration um but at the end of the day it makes you um a stronger stronger advocate for yourself and you um go through a process i think of self-exploration and self-discovery as as you move through some of these different transitions and sometimes um the transition period i don't know if i we talked about this enough but with your with your family i come from a family where my my parents are really supportive of all of my decisions um and often that that takes uh you know talking to my mom or my dad about like this is this some step i want to take this i want to move to a new apartment or you know i want to um i want to try something new and for me it's been really rewarding to have um family kind of queuing in with that with me so that they can talk to me about like okay carly like it's cool that you want to move apartments but like with your walker here are some pieces we might have to consider just fyi and i always felt um like i was in the driver's seat because i think my parents were more cued into um different like supports or approaches to give me what i needed um as a young person so still as an adult i feel like i'm able to in my independent living, living journey that i feel never stops um I'm able to say like, this is what I'd like to do. And this is the help I need from you to do it. Or, you know, sometimes um, my transitions, like, I feel like transition is so many things in, in like finding medical help or just going from this is, this is so boring to so many people, but I think it's fascinating, right? Going from your um, pediatrician to like your primary care doctor, that's not necessarily something that is mutually exclusive to youth, youth with disabilities or people with disabilities. Everybody kind of has to, in that transition phase, figure out like, okay, what doctors do I need? Even if you're perfectly healthy at the time that you're figuring out a new transition plan, you never know what's gonna happen. And so um, I'm really grateful for my interest in like my medical stuff, because I remember when I was living at home, I never had any sort of like medical snafus or anything. And then of course, as I said, when I first time I ever tried to move away from home, I had some health scares and I was like, how do I, what do I do with this? So now I'm like hyper aware of like, what doctor do I need to go to? How do I need to schedule these? And um, I wish that I had planned for that as a younger adult, because I'm still trying to remember like how much paperwork I have to fill out and you know, keeping record as uh, with my disability of like what's happening, you know, and, and keeping um, just like files with me if I need to go to a new doctor. So I think healthcare transition, um, as with many young adults, is always is always like something we don't talk about enough. And I think that was really important for my personal growth as well. Uh, and for me, I, I guess I would kind of echo some of the things that Carly said. You know, at every major transition point uh, in my life, um, taking some time to think about what I want for myself has always been really important. Um, because I don't care who you are, there's usually, you know, some pressure coming from somewhere, even if it's our, our own selves to say, this is the way something has to happen. You should do this, you should go here. But, um, you know, taking those times before, you know, taking time before a major transition occurs to think about what it is you want so that you can advocate for yourself and get the supports aligned with that is really critical as opposed to, you know, not taking the time to do that and then, you know, having other opinions um, in some ways dictate for you what should happen for your life. Um, because the, I'm a quote person, I can't help it, but you know, another quote that I really like is just that no one can live your life but you, and you should make it the best life possible for you. Um, doesn't mean you don't take other, you know, opinions or considerations into, into, into play or put, you know, consider them. But, you know, at the end of the day, you have a life, you have dreams, you have goals, and, you know, 
ideally you want to align the people and the supports in your life that help you get to the thing that you want to do. Um, but oftentimes, sometimes I feel like we're not, uh, we're not programmed to think that way or, or to create that space in our, you know, in our planning process to, to really have a self-reflective moment, but it's absolutely critical because you don't want to find yourself in a place where you don't want to be. Absolutely. Good one, Alicia. I like that. Yeah. Um, so here's the last question. What was the hardest transition that you've had in your life? Um, I think when I moved from Florida out to um, the second university I went to, which was out in Salt Lake City, that was the hardest because if I um, had like, you know, I, ha I had a random like medical follow-up thing or I missed home or I wasn't used to the snow. I remember I used to wear flip-flops in the snow all the time and um, my, I would tell my family about it and they get mad at me over the phone, but like, it's those moments of experiencing pieces of life and not, um, having a support system at first that was close to you. Um, as I tried to build my own support system, you know, out West, I had people when I moved that I knew, um, from over the years and through church and everything. But I think that is really always hard, um, of like not being around family and learning how to get used to that um, for sure, I think was the hardest transition. Also, I wanna, I just, this is sort of off topic, but I we didn't talk about this, but I think um, enabling like mental health supports is really important. I feel like with Gen Zers, everyone loves to talk about mental health or with millennials, you know, mental health is like a, a part of um, disability that everyone is always sharing memes and tips online, especially during 2020, things get really stressful. And, um, you know, I think that as I was moving through the presentation, I remembered that um, I something like 70 to 80% of people with physical disabilities also experience um, some degree of mental or behavioral health challenges, or, um, you know, mental illness. And I think that as we might experience more structural barriers to a lot of pieces around our life, it's just really important to have um, some self-care and um, you know more of that self-compassion um, with maybe like a, a plan um, in case you have a lot of stress or you have a really tough time, um, some sort of like mental health plan. If it's not seeing a provider, it's just kind of making a list or, or creating, um, some activities that you'd like to do to um, take some time out for yourself because it can be uh, more stressful and difficult as we move through different changes in our lives. Um, and to also recognize that sometimes resting is okay, even as strong advocates, um, creating that mental health plan and, and having you know the self-compassion and allowing yourself to rest um, is, is really important. We don't want to burn out too quickly, especially during transition. Yeah, no, I, I agree with all of what you said, Carly. Um, for me, I think uh, certainly one of the hardest transition points was going from high school into college um, and that move from Philly into Tallahassee. Um, but I will, in looking back at it, you know, and I'll say this, it was hard because you know, you're going from an environment where you know people, you have your support um, and you just, know what to expect and then you're going into an environment that is the complete opposite of that but looking back at it looking back on it it was probably one of the best experiences of my life and i say that because you know it takes practice getting used to being in new environments it takes practice you know establishing new supports and and they but there will always be points in your life where you may have to do that again and um you know, practice makes perfect or near perfect, right? Um, and so I, I am glad that I took uh, the zigzags of life, if you will, to get to where I am now, because again, you never know what you may be able to accomplish or do or experience unless you try. Um, so I say embrace the discomfort, <laughs> embrace 
the new experience um, because it will pay off. Well said. <laughs> Well, I guess that's uh, all the questions that we have, but for anybody that's out there that are watching uh, on Facebook, if you have any questions, you can actually leave them in the comment section below. Just a reminder to let everyone know that we do have a report card link. If you click on the link, you have a survey, you fill out the survey, and then you make sure you hit submit. So that way uh, we'll make sure that we're able to get it. Um, I guess this is the end of our session, unless if Carly or Alicia, you have any closing statements you guys want to add? I would just encourage everyone to go um, to IEL.org and um, try to look for our guidepost for success, uh, the document that I was talking about earlier, along with some of those youth documents um, and links that I shared. I think for um, anyone, it, you know, to make it less overwhelming, we have some great information that all of us can use regardless of disability or, you know, the point in your transition. Check it out. Yep, check it out and to infinity and beyond. <laughs> well, we thank you both for being here and, and joining us in this session. Uh, for those of you, thank you guys for also being here joining us live. And we'll be back uh, with Mike Benny on our last session uh, for today around 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. His session will be Take Your Power Back. So make sure you. Uh, go on to the Family Cafe uh, Facebook page and we'll be live then at around 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. And we'll have it shared on our Florida Youth Council page as well. So we appreciate you guys. Thank you, Carly. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you, Nikki. And we'll be back around 4 o'clock. Yes, thank you. See you at 4 o'clock. <laughs>